again YouTube, Blue Buffalo Pile here, sitting out on the porch. Today we're going to make some bread. Yeah, it's a little artisan loaf. I've been looking at it online for some time. It's a pretty simple recipe. We're going to make a little bread. I'm going to show you how to put it all together. I'll put the recipe down in the comment or down in the description of this video. But if you like this bread and you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, go ahead and give me a like. Give me a subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when stuff's coming online from the, the Buffalo Pile. Anyway, got a good little bread recipe. I think you're really going to like it if you get a chance to try it. Cooking it in a Dutch oven. Okay, YouTube, here we are in Princess Pookie's kitchen. And what we're going to be making today is some Dutch oven artisan type bread. It's a real simple recipe and we're going to cook it in I actually got this Dutch oven and I got another Dutch oven that I'm going to cook because I'm going to cook more than one loaf. So I'm cooking them two at a time because I can get two ovens in my oven, if that makes any sense. You'll see later what I'm talking about. All right. Now, in Princess Pookie's kitchen, she's made it abundantly clear that the rule is that I am a cook and not a chef, regardless of what my apron says. Because she says a chef has somebody to do the cutting and the fixing for them and then do the cleaning up when they get done. And a cook is responsible for all of their own stuff. So, I'm a cook, which means I'll also be washing dishes here in just a little while. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to make this bread. It's a real simple recipe. It just takes a few a few items and we'll go over them as we go in here and there'll be the recipe will be down in the description of this video. All right, to start with, you need a mixing bowl, just an average size mixing bowl. It needs to be big enough to hold at least three cups of flour because that's how much flour it's gonna take and to be able to stir it. So first thing we do is we take a bag of flour and a one cup measuring scoop and we dip out three cups of flour, just even at the top, not packed, uh, not fluffed or anything else, just even at the top. Just three cups, and if it's humped up a little bit, I don't worry about it too much. If it's a little short, I don't worry about it too much. Not an exact measure here. But anyway, we get three cups of flour. All right, we get our three cups of flour, and I use just unbleached white all-purpose flour. I've tried the uh, or I've tried the unbleached. We use the bleached. Um, the unbleached kind of gave it a a, a heavy feel to me, uh, where the where the bleached is is a much lighter, fluffier loaf. Feels like a, a better better bread. Um, you can use bread flour if you want to. Uh, I've checked it out. Most people say bread flour is is probably per preferable, but with the cost difference, all-purpose flour works just fine, and that's what we use here is all-purpose flour. One bag of flour will produce four of these loaves of bread. So whenever I'm cooking, I'm going to cook at least four using a bag of flour. I've actually got another bag of flour over here. We're going to make six tonight. But anyway, I'm going to show you this one. Now you're going to take a quarter teaspoon of yeast. And I know right now in the pandemic, everybody's a cooking and baking and doing their own thing. And yeast is kind of hard to find. I had to work to get mine. And if you have to work to get it, well, that's what you have to do. Or if you have to wait to get it, that's what you have to do. And then we're going to put a teaspoon of salt. Again, just a measuring device. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to pour this in here. Yeah, if a little bit spills over, get a little humped up. Again, measurements ain't perfect, but it's going to make good bread. So, teaspoon of salt. I use sea salt. Uh, table salt works just fine. I just prefer the sea salt. Uh, I don't know why. To me, it just got a little better taste to it. So, I use the sea salt. Now, with this done, I'm going to step over here and get a spatula. Hold on just a second. I'm 
with that done, we're going to get a spatula and we're going to stir the dry ingredients together. Mainly to get the yeast mixed in there so that it helps it rise evenly. And you want to get it all the dried, stirred up good. And then for the wet, the only wet, I, I make a little, I make a little hole in the, in the, in the dough with my spatula to pour the water into helps it get incorporated without having to stir and stir and stir for a long time. <clears throat> now, for the water, we're going to use one and a half cups of what I call tap hot water. It says in the directions not to use boiling water. You want tap hot water somewhere around 110 to 130 degrees, according to the directions that I got. And my, my hot water heater set at about 120, 125, and that's where most residential hot water heaters are, is around 120 somewhere. Um, so just run your hot water till it gets good and hot, then run you a cup and a half in your measuring cup, pour it into your well, and we'll be ready to mix. I'll be right back. Let me get the water going. Okay. Now I turned the hot water on and I let it run till it was hot enough I just... Couldn't stand for my hand to be under there but just for a second or two. And, and that's what I call water heater hot. So that's about 120 to 125 degree water. And now I'm going to pour this in the well, one and a half cups, into the well. <clears throat> then I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to turn. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a... Uh, not a fluffy, but just a sticky consistency. It's going to be a real sticky type of a dough when it gets done. And it's going to be clumpy almost. I'll let you look at it here. Uh, give me a few minutes. It doesn't take long, just a couple of seconds here to get this all done. And be sure and scrape the sides and the bottom. You want to get all that loose flour into the moisture and mixed into the dough. Okay, now, if you look at that, see that dough is just, it's like it's uh, just coming apart, but it's its all kind of stuck together, um, all the flowers incorporated and everything, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Now we're going to clean our spatula off, get our dough in there, then we're going to put it in a resting bowl. Now this gets a little messy, you get it on your fingers, be sure you wash your hands. I washed mine before I started, and I'm going to wash them two or three times every loaf I make. So that's just part of it. We want to be clean. Make sure your utensils and your bowls are all clean. And like I said, we'll be doing the dishes after a while. So now you get your spatula cleaned off and get your fingers cleaned off as good as you can, sticking it down to the dough there. And then what we've got is we got a resting bowl here. This is just a, an empty, clean bowl. We're going to roll this dough off in there because I'm going to mix up some more loaves here. And we're going to roll this dough off in here and we're going to cover it with a plastic wrap. Plastic wrap seals around the edge and that helps make sure that we get a tightness to hold our moisture in. That's what helps the bread to rise. So we're going to take this and we're going to dump this in here. And it's just it's going to be loose and clumpy. That's what we're looking for. I want to go ahead and extra flour can just go on the top there. It'll it'll kind of incorporate and be part of it. it. Sure does look good when it's done, and it's going to look good. Going to be good. Now here I'm not kneading it. I'm just kind of pressing it out, making it fill the bottom of the bowl because we want to give it a good chance to rise. Now get the last of this off my fingers in here as best I can. <clears throat> now we're gonna take us a piece of plastic wrap. And yeah, I need to wash my hands, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this plastic wrap on here first. Pull us out a good piece, plenty to cover that lid. Pull it down, cut it at the edge, 
Oh, plastic wrap's my nemesis sometimes. It kind of gets away and gets all stuck together, but let's see if we can get it on here. Okay, hook it to this side and then hook it to this side. There we go. Now we're talking. We won't pull it kind of tight. Hold that, hold that seal on there. Good deal. Now this is gonna go over here to the waiting area and it'll set for at least three hours. Now this is a fairly forgiving bread. So if it goes four hours, that's okay. Even up to five hours is all right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the rest of the dough I'll mix up six batches of that <clears throat> all together, and then we'll let them rest. The first ones will get about three and a half hours. I found three hours is a little quick, so I usually give the first batch at least three and a half hours. And then I come back, and we'll start working with it again. We'll do a, we, we do a little get together, and then we do a second rise, which I'll show you in just a few minutes, and we get the oven ready to go so we can start baking. So y'all hang in there with me. Got a little break, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, been a little over three and a half hours. Uh, we had some supper, and now my bread's had its first rise, and it's risen pretty good. It's uh, A lot of people say bread needs to rise to twice the size of the original dough ball, but this bread doesn't quite rise that much. Uh, about half again as much as it was when you started. It's about where I usually get it at. We're going to get this out here in just a minute and work it, work on it. But first, we're going to go over here to the oven, and we're going to set the oven and get the Dutch ovens warming up so they'll be ready to go when we get ready to put them in the oven. Okay, so now we're over here at the oven. And uh, these are my Dutch ovens. I got my outside Dutch oven that uh, has got the lip on the lid and the legs, and I use it for cooking outdoors. It also works in the oven here. And then I got one of Miss uh, Pookie's. Uh, Dutch ovens that she uses to cook with here in the kitchen. We're going to stick them both in this oven here. And yeah, I'm using a cooling rack on the top of the oven here. Uh, not just to set those pots on at the start, but to set the lids on when I pull them out because they have to come out while they're hot. And this is just an easy place to set them right here on top of the stove uh, while I switch the bread out or brown the top of it and then put them right back in so they don't have to worry, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the oven to 450 degrees and it's just gonna heat, heat the oven and the ovens, both of the Dutch ovens at the same time and they're going to need to get to a full 450 degrees. So even after the timer goes off saying the oven's up, they still need a few minutes to be sure that the Dutch ovens come up to heat. While that's happening, we're going to prepare the bread for a second rise. So we'll go back over to the counter now. Okay, during our first rise, I went ahead and I did all the dishes that we did mixing everything up and uh, got them put away. And so now we just, all we got left is this. And then we got a, a cooling rack over here where we'll put the bread out when it gets out of the oven. And now we got the ovens in the oven getting warmed up. We're ready to get this ready for its second rise. Now again, wash my hands good. Wanna be sure you're keeping your hands clean, especially when you're touching foodstuffs. And yeah, I don't have it in the bag anymore. I'm using the, uh, the uh, I emptied the first bag and then I got half of the second bag gone, so I put it all in here. Now you just need about a scoop of flour to put out on your countertop. This is where we're gonna work our dough. And it doesn't require much work. So we're gonna spread that out, get a little on our fingers, and then we're just gonna work this ball of dough out of the bowl here and let it land in the flour. All right. 
Now, I like to flip it over just because that gets flour on all the sides and makes it to where it's not as quite as sticky on your hands because it's still a tacky, sticky dough, you know, like we mixed it up. Then I just push it out flat, and what we're going to do is we're going to fold it and then push it a little bit and then fold it in half again. Okay, I folded it over in half, and then I folded it in half, so it's really in quarters now. I'm going to push that down, then I'm going to flip it over. Put a little flour up there. Then I'm going to fold it over again. And then the fourth time, and I've just gone went around the circle and folded over the edges. And the last one I'm going to bring up here. I'm going to put down, then I'm going to turn it back over, and I'm going to form a ball. Just kind of form a half moon up on top there. Now I've got a piece of parchment paper here. This is going to make it where it's no mess after this. Won't be a mess in the bowl that we're going to set it in to rise for a second time. And it also won't be a mess in the Dutch oven. And it makes it easy to get it in and out because that bread's going to be hot. That oven set at 450 degrees. So we take this, place it in the middle of our parchment paper. Then we're going to carry this parchment paper over and we're going to put it in one of our holding bowls. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, now over here on the other side of the sink, our kitchen ain't real big, so not real easy to film in here and do all this. But anyway, I got a couple of bowls, a couple of big bowls here that I'm going to use to hold my, my dough for my second rise. And then from here, it'll just go directly into the oven. And then from the oven, it'll come out and go to the cooling rack. So we're going to get this first ball in here, and then it's going to sit for probably 45 minutes or so, enough time for the oven to get good and hot and the ovens to get good and hot, and then we'll be ready to go into the oven. So let's get this in the holding bowl. Now I like to form my parchment paper a little bit here on the holding bowl. Fold the edges down to make sure that it's not covering any part of the top of the bread, the dough ball. Not because the dough ball is going to rise that much. It doesn't get much of a rise here in this last part. But so that when it goes into the oven, that paper's already kind of got a memory as how to go. So that paper don't cover the top of it. Because if paper's covering the top of this anywhere, it could affect the, the uh, coloration and everything when you get your uh, baking done. So... We got this in the bowl. We're going to cover it with a towel. And like I said, we got about 35 to 45 minutes to let it rise a second time. Let the oven get good and hot. And then we're going to be ready to put some bread in the oven. Be right back with you. Okay, everybody. We're ready to put the bread in the oven. Oven's been on 450 degrees for quite some time. I got the Dutch ovens good and hot. The lids are hot. Everything in there is hot. Ready to go. Bread's been on rise for a little over 30 minutes, so we're ready to put it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the oven. We'll pull the lids out, set them up here. We'll get both of the loaves in, and then we'll put the lids back on, close the oven up, and set the timer, okay? Now, know that this oven is hot. I've got silicone glove here. They don't fit me very good, so I'm just going to use them like a holder with these silicone things are very good for hot ovens and hot lids that we're going to be dealing with here. All right, those are out. We're going to uncover our dough. It's risen just a little bit, you can see. So now it's ready to go in one of the ovens. Again, you want to be sure your parchment paper is not covering any part of your dough ball because it will affect the cooking and will affect the color and appearance of it when it gets done. Number two. Take you long to look at it when you touch one of them either. All right. All 
got lids back on. Both of them are in there. Lid on there, the moisture coming out of that dough helps steam the bread and make the bread rise up as it's cooking. So that's part of the reason you want the Dutch oven going. At the end, we'll take it off, cook for about 12 more minutes. That'll give it that good brown crust on top and it'll really look pretty. Anyway, set your timer. Set 450 degrees, gonna set your timer for about 30 to 35 minutes. 35 is kind of where I leave mine. Uh, look at your bread when you get to that point. If you wanna look at it at 30 minutes, that's okay. But 35 is where I found the sweet spot to be. So give it 35 minutes on the timer, check it, and then take the lid off, give it another 12 minutes to brown that crust. We'll be back to brown the crust in just about 35 minutes. Okay, our buzzer just went off. Says it's been 35 minutes since the bread's been cooking. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna push bake, or we're gonna clear this up here. We're gonna push bake and put this back on 450. So that oven will stay good and hot because we got more bread to bake. Then we're gonna open this up. Whew. Steam foggy glasses up just in a hat second. And we'll take these lids off. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see down in there very good or not. I'll bring you in a little closer. But see, you can see the top of those breads. They're just starting to brown up a little bit, get crispy edges on them. Now we're going to leave them open in the oven for another 12 minutes to get that good, good crust on the top. All right. All right. We got her set 12 minutes. Get that crust on there good and good and bright. And then we'll get them out and see what it looks like. Be right back. Okay, timer's gone off. Bread should just be ready. Oh yeah. That fine loaf coming out there. Looks good. We're gonna let this cool for a little bit and get another batch going. Thanks for joining me. We'll do a little wrap up out on the porch in a minute. Well, now see that's pretty easy. Yeah, it's all done in the oven. You don't get to cook it out on the coals, but uh, that gives it that good brown crust on top. And boy, Princess Pookie, she likes that crust. And well, I'm gonna tell you, that bread's just as good as it looks. Mmm, that's pretty good bread. You can put a little butter on that when it's hot out of the oven and man, it's good stuff. So thank you for joining me and as always, I'll see you next time here on the porch.